Oh, good morning, or whenever you're watching this, how are you? I'm so sorry. Yesterday, we're not quite sure what happened, but we lost sound in the last seven minutes of the demonstration. Now, 99% of stuff was covered, but it's just a couple of key little things that you need me to tell you if you can't lip read. And I had a really good go this morning trying to work out what I had been saying in the last seven minutes yesterday. And I do apologise for my attire because literally up out of bed, ready to do some serious work outside and um, hit my shop shed to fill some orders. And this is how I dress for work, not to look quite respectable in front of the camera. But so the hair's hidden under the cap <laughs> and um, no makeup, sorry, all of that. But I need to come back and fill those little gaps in for you. So where we were up to before we went to silent movies yesterday was talking about um, how that how to get a really quick, clever little way of your reverse pattern. So, with your, um, with transferring onto your, um, onto your quilt and everything, sorry, onto your cushion and everything, you can use light box, carbon paper, all that sort of stuff. But when you want to get a really quick reverse of what you're doing to use for tracing onto steamer seam or Vlizavix, your preferred paperbacked adhesive, this is my favourite thing to do. So I use this stuff, which is going to be your book cover, or perhaps you've got some leftover from many, many years ago, overhead projector sheets, something that's really lovely and thin and clear. And you can hear it wobbling, you can just see it on the camera. Super nice to use for one-off templates as well, which I don't think I mentioned in the silent video. So I've traced off the design, and remember we've used it in two different ways on the cushion. We've used it this way to do the stitching detail on first and then we've used the reverse with our paper back adhesive to do the flowers. What I want though, I want a really, really quick reverse so that I can fill in the detail, which I did yesterday on my flower, and it also helps me position it onto the cushion. So I've traced it off with a permanent marker. I've got a Sharpie here. And then you've just got to flip it and you've got the reverse straight away. So then I can take this over on the side with my little flower, which has been put together with flies affixed, so it's now the complete reverse of what it was on the diagram. And I can just sit them side by side to actually mark on the little vein details if I want to, fill in um, all the special lines, what I call the special lines, that are going to give you the illusion that you've got individual petals there and we didn't do that clever thing um, in the previous one um, where we've cut it all out as one piece. So it's a one piece, not all little individual ones. Okay, so I've got all of those on. Actually, last time I missed a little line here on that little centre bit of purple. So I can hold that up for you and you can see I've got, can I get this so you can see it over the calendar? Yep, there you go. So there's the drawing in reverse and I've transferred the lines on. And as I harped on about last time, it's a really detailed drawing. So if you get some of those lines in different places or a different wiggle or you miss a couple of them or you add a couple more in, it's still going to look fine. So now I can take this and I'll peel it off. I really, I really did like the look of it on the calendar yesterday and when I was replaying it to see where the sound dropped out, I kind of, I'm really liking this and I'm sort of, my brain's thinking about how can we do a really fun, quirky thing where we make a different one and we put them all in a book and then anyway, oh, don't you worry about that. I'll do all that sleepless night bit. You do all the other sleepless night bit. So I'll bring this down here and this is the one, remember, that I'm working on. We're going to turn into a bag on a quilter's life. So that's on a, do you want to, I've got, I've got a picture I can show you. Hang on. There you go. That is a quilter's life. So a quilterslife.podia.com. That is my online subscription club. It's only $10 Australian a month. And we do lots of little different projects, recipes, backstage stuff in there. Um, my girls will tell you that are in there at the moment. They've had a little bit quiet in the last few months, but we're ramping up big time now for 2024. A few things got in the way last year, like, you know, moving house, the business, all of that. 
but now we've got a really pretty place to pop up lots of photos for you and film in. So, all right, now where am I going to put this? I think what I'm going to do with this one, just like the cushion, I will, oh, what am I going to say, sort of stagger it. I wanted to say superimpose, but that's not right. Stagger it over to one side. So I will have the stitching over here that's on the denim and then this will come over down onto it over the top so you'll get this sort of like shadow effect. Now remember what we talked about as well when you actually do all of your stitching detail and your applique you're going to be working on um, a light background for your flowers. I just chose to do this yesterday so you could really see the stitching stand out and this is a better um, background medium for me to use for the bag we're going to make on a quilter's life. So I did actually decide to go straight ahead with that. But your flowers are all going to sit on your pale background over here and then you'll have your contrast stitching sitting over here. Same thread for the stitching background and the applique of your leaves and then your colours of choice, whether it be orange and purple, whatever you want to use to applique down the little flowers over the top. I remember what I spoke about yesterday as well. What it actually was towards the end was just reiterating how important it is to think outside the square with backgrounds for these sorts of applique projects. So if you've got a big quilt and you've got five or six pieces of cream and none of them have enough yardage in them to do all the background squares, have a look at piecing them all together. So you might be able to cut them into strips, into squares or whatever, piece it all together and give yourself a really unique, beautiful background to go on the back. I can see this same applique sitting over a background of all different shades of darker greens, maybe on some coffee creams or a taupe as well would be really lovely. If you've got a whole collection of old bits and pieces of old um, linen tablecloths and things that you've kept because the other bit had the tea stain on it, but you've kept those precious pieces, put them all together and then pop your applique over the top. Lots of different things that you can do. And also, um, I did also just mention as well, we've got this seam here on the front. Depending on what you're doing with the back, if you are using your own fabrics or these, and you want to use three or four different ones pieced together for your back of your cushion, I love that, because you've got a whole other look happening on the other side, then perhaps use one of those seams to pop yourself in a zip. I haven't sewn mine up yet. <laughs> It's still sitting down the bottom. I just know the day that I sew it up, I'm going to need to take the cushion insert out for it to travel somewhere with me. I just know it's going to happen. But I could get my act together and actually put a zip in on that bottom seam. Um, and you can also put one on the back as well. So I hope you have a really, really good time with it. You know, I'm just thinking, have you done all your birthday cards for this year yet? Because if you've got your little leftover bits of flower fabric, I think this would make a spectacular card just to pop on, adhere it on with some, and then pop it down with some little stitches with not a brand new, perhaps a more blunt needle, and then stick a little stem on as well. Someone would absolutely love that. So I hope you get a lot of joy out of doing it. And this is one of the bigger projects time-wise for the year. So this can just sit and simmer away in the background while we move on next month and do our uh, oriental fan table runner. We've got some yummy eggy sponge cakes to make. I'm going to serve them up with fresh fruits for the season. And then we've got a lovely little basket to make in March. So it's just going to keep going. And this can sort of be every time you've got that 10 minutes to sit down at the machine and work on it. All right. So apologies again about yesterday. Uh, I hope that for the rest of the year, we only have one make demo per month. Who knows? I could just keep adding. I might. I might pop you up a brag shot of this bag when it's finished as well. But anyway, listen, you have a fantastic day. Thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you again. I look forward to seeing you next month. All right. Bye.